welcome to Musings with Mastermind Ed. Hi, I'm Trisha Friedman. For the next few Mondays, Ejiro Learning and I will be bringing you Musings with Mastermind Ed. You'll learn more about Mastermind Ed through any of Ejiro's communication platforms, but this playlist is linked to Mastermind Ed in that it is trying to bring new thinking by using fresh perspectives. You'll hear from a variety of educators coming from a variety of places and contexts. Each week, we are going to discuss a resource or a tip uh, and hear from people and, and learn what they would do with that resource, how they might or might not use it. If you would like to participate in one of these conversations, watch out on our Coach Better Facebook page for upcoming opportunities to do just that. Enjoy. On this week's episode, we will be discussing a resource from Daniel Pink's Pinkcast, where he discusses the idea of developing a user manual all about you and your team to help you collaborate better. You'll find a link to that resource in the description of our video. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Gary and I'm currently teaching at the International School of Manila. I am a third grade teacher there. After watching this video, the first thing that came to mind for me was how are we as educators helping students share who they are in the classroom? When are we giving students opportunities to share what their user manual is so students in the classroom and teachers can help serve their needs the best way they want them to? Uh, I thought of a number of ideas of how I could do this in the elementary setting using a podcast, having teachers and kids share themselves and who they're about through an audio with the expectation that throughout the year, students are um, expected to listen to each podcast and really truly understand who their classmates are. Students could do this through a written letter. They could share exactly who they are, some of their pet peeves, some of the things that they enjoy and dislike. And again, students expected to read all of these letters throughout the year so they're building community and understanding who's in the room. I also think it's important that teachers spend the time doing this work as well. Teachers also need to spend the time sharing who they are as educators, some of their philosophies, so kids truly understand who's in front of them, um, facilitator in the classroom. I'm Susan K.S. Grigsby, the junior school librarian at Wellington College International School in Bangkok. The concept of a user's manual had me thinking about what a useful tool this could be for both librarians and teachers who are coaching students or adults in literature circles or independent book studies, and it could also help us understand who we are as readers. So some energy depletion questions might be, what excites you in a book? What makes you choose a particular book? But it could also be about what turns you off to a book and, and what stories don't interest you. Communication could be about how students share the stories that they're reading and how do they want their peers or their teachers to communicate with them and what tools do they feel most effective. Pet peeves might be noting something about that a writer does that turns you off to a genre or a story, but it could also be a great place to talk about are there windows and mirrors available to you in a diverse collection. And the misunderstanding part could be used to help students articulate what they think others may misunderstand about them because of their reading choices. It's an excellent place to explore how judgments are made about readers based on traditional age, gender, or cultural roles in the context of the books or the stories they choose to read. Hi, this is Sarah Woods. I uh, work in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, and I was thinking about that video and if I were going to run that with staff or faculty or people, humans, even kids, frankly, I would start with ideation because I think sometimes we assume people know what they want or can do, and it, sometimes it helps to just hear what other people can do and think. And um, So I go do an ideation process, and then I'd have everyone do their own slides, picking from the things that came up or maybe adding other things, and I'd have them just do one slide and do it like a mood board, so maybe add their colors that they like and maybe some other things that are sort of related to them. And then um, and then I'd have them share that slide onto one big slide deck. And once it's on the big slide deck, I'd have a, a reflection process. Um, there's one called Appreciation Apology Aha. And I think it's a wonderful way to reflect on something like this. So you could look at the slides and say, you know, wh who do you really appreciate now from hearing about um, how they communicate, for example, or what surprises you when you're looking at these. 
Um, or maybe you've been emailing someone after hours and they don't like it, and now you're like, oh God, what have I done? So that's how I'd run it. Um, and I'm a technical uh, innovation coach at um, in Tashkent International School. Hi, my name is Rajesh Kripalani. I'm the teaching and learning coordinator at Eaton House International School, Suzhou, in China. When I first came across the idea of creating a user manual for myself several years ago, I, was, um, I began drafting one for myself. Uh, I was tickled pink at first, honestly. But the further I went um, with it, the more I realized its potential for a meaningful deep dive into self-reflection as, um, as a professional educator. Like much of my learning journey, it is still a work in progress. In theory of knowledge, um, or TOK, which is a core component of the IB diploma, uh, we explore the connection between personal and shared knowledge. As a TOK teacher, I see the user manual as a brilliant opportunity for my students to explore their own personal knowledge. I believe that the process will not only raise self-awareness in the authors themselves, but also strengthen relationships among their peers. I'm excited to see how this works out with my students. Hello, I'm Marion McQueen. So um, I'm a recently retired teacher. I taught for 43 years, can you believe it, in places like Australia for a very long time, Turkey, Indonesia and Mongolia, international schools. Now I have a very small consulting job in Bali. Who can argue with doing some work in Bali? So what gives me energy and what depletes me? So I get energy from innovative ideas that really truly engage students. Uh, good conversation, creative thoughts, and open-ended answers, not just doing work. Okay, what depletes me is testing regimes that lead nowhere, that don't really give you any results at test for the sake of just giving the students a test. The best way to communicate with me is in person, especially in formal situations, when the need arises, rather than meetings for the sake of meetings, and through sharing ideas, perhaps through lately WhatsApp and Messenger have been some ways I've been sharing ideas. My pet peeves, curriculum that does not allow students to express their creativity and their own unique thoughts, Sla static conversations and useless meetings. What do you need to understand about me? I need equal time alone as social time. And that when I look disengaged, maybe it's because I'm off on a train of thought that makes me excited about education in some way. Thank you. Thanks so much to today's panel. Again, the link to the resource they were exploring is in the video description. Let us know if you try it out and if you've got tips for other people, please do share on our Coach Better Facebook page. Take care.